What it do, everybody? We back with another episode of Wrestling with the Exotics. It's your boy, the franchise kid, the face that runs the place, the champ that runs the camp, franchise Jerry. And I'm happy to be back. And today's episode, y'all see the pin. We're gonna be talking about WrestleMania 40. This pay per view lit as hell. I can't even lie. And shout out to my boy who works for the production team. Hooked me up with some WrestleMania 40 gear. Uh, he hooked me up with a hat, but I can't really wear it right now because of my braids and all. But, hey, man, shout out to you. But, yeah, y'all, this this pay-per-view, it was fire. Like, I can't even lie, you know. I like night two more than night one. But, overall, they did a really great job with these match cards and uh, these lineups. But with that being said, let's get right into it with our first match. I obviously got to talk about... Whoa! Cody Rhodes finishing the story and becoming the new undisputed WWE champ. Shout out Cody. Um, that was one hell of a match that he had with Roman. Man, and I gotta say, Roman, how are you the GOAT when you constantly gotta cheat in your matches, man? John Cena would have fought Cody Rhodes one on one at Mania. I'm just saying. And John Cena always coming out here advocating for Roman Reigns. But in the big picture of it all, he can't get the job done without the utilization of his family. And what happened in this match? Obviously, it was a bloodline rules match. But, you know, his entire family got involved. Solo, uh, Jimmy, and hell, even The Rock. But luckily for Cody... He has some solid people there to back him up. He had Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Randy Orton. He had Seth Rollins. John Cena intervened, uh, intervened in the match. You know, so Cody came prepared for that shit. But I just really wish that Roman could have done this reign without cheating as much as he did. That's the only thing I'll say. Other than that. Shout out to Roman for holding it down as long as he did. Um, I'm, I'm proud of him for being able to do that. But at the same time, I refuse to call him the GOAT. Because like I said, John Cena would have done this shit by himself. For real. you know, And not on some selfish shit. But on some, I don't need you guys to help me cheat to win matches. You know what I'm saying? And I tell you guys all the time. I like Gunther as a champion so much. Because look at how he uses his faction. Good to be beating these niggas up, all type of shit with Louis Kaiser and the other bald dude, uh, Giovanni Vinci. <laughs> you know, so they be beating people up all the time. But when it comes to that actual match, good to be like, yo, y'all better not come out here and interrupt this match. Don't get involved. I'm the ring general. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I don't I don't need you guys to help me win my matches. Maybe to beat some niggas up and soften them up a little bit before the matches. Pause. But other than that, no. Don't get involved in this match. And that was the same type of energy I wanted to see from Roman Reigns. I get that you wanted to put your family on and all that shit. And you could have easily done that doing it the way Gunther's doing it. And uh, going back to Cody Rhodes... I'm really proud of him, you know. Um, I know I came on the show and I was talking about I don't think that he's ready for this. But, you know, after seeing this match and then just seeing how much everybody was so hyped on him. And then, you know, you also got to accumulate all the, the work he's been putting in on these uh, non-live uh, pay-per-view events. You just, you factor in all that together and... Cody is definitely the right decision. He's the right decision. That's the best thing I can say right now. Is he as accomplished as a Bobby Lashley, Bray Wyatt, AJ Styles? No. But, you know, some, somebody needs their start at some point. And what I'm trying to say is, at some point, you're just going to have to give Cody the title and let him go in and build that story up on his own kind of like how they did the Miz the Miz wasn't ready 
They just gave that shit to him. And then he ended up holding that shit for a decent amount of time. You know, he wasn't ready for it, but they made him ready for it. And then he ended up winning multiple belts after that and even another world championship. So even though I might have felt that Cody wasn't ready, I still think this is the right decision. I would have liked to see Roman Reigns break Hulk Hogan's record, but at the same time, it wasn't really necessary. And you also have to take into account Hulk Hogan's, and in Hulk Hogan's time, he was wrestling plumbers, firefighters, and fucking police officers, all type of shit. Any able-bodied person, he was wrestling and putting his title on the line. It's an entire new day and age of wrestling. So that type of shit ain't going. And to be able to hold the title that long, it's, it's too unbelievable for anybody to do it. Too unbelievable for anybody to do it today, I should say. But, man, that was a phenomenal match. Cody looked like he was about to lose this match. Because Solo ended up coming out, you know, and then out of nowhere, John Cena comes out to put Solo through a fucking table. I was hyped. Um, I also have to mention Solo's on a big ass losing streak ever since he beat John Cena and quote unquote silenced him, you know. So I'm actually happy about that a little bit because it's like, yeah, that's what you get, bro. You was fucking with the wrong one. At the same time, I told you guys this shit last year. I don't want to see Solo Sokoa end up being the second coming of Umaga because Umaga did not work out well. And the only championship that he really held was the Intercontinental Championship. And his biggest opponent was Jeff Hardy <laughs> wrestling for that championship. And I just see Solo Sokoa turning out the same way. He's not he's already not coming out here wearing shoes. They not giving him they barely giving him any dialogue. He's mostly <laughs> screaming and doing all that extra shit. And then he's going out there losing matches and he's supposed to be the enforcer. What was Umaga doing? Going out there losing matches to people like John Cena and everybody else and he's supposed to be Vince McMahon's enforcer. So, you know, I really don't like Solo Sokoa's direction. I think they definitely should start giving him more wins or a championship, especially now that Roman's taking a backseat, you know, maybe even send him back to NXT so he can get the North American championship. But y'all got to get Solo right. Y'all got to get Solo right because, man, like, you know Umaga didn't turn out well. Shout out to him. Love the Simone Bulldozer. Shout out to the family. But let's be real, it wasn't like Umaga was this great world champion like Roman Reigns or anybody is. And speaking of the bloodline, Jacob Fatu has signed with the WWE. And for you guys that don't know him like that, hey, do your research on him. This man, he, he's a monster. He's a monster, a, a Samoan monster, part of the bloodline family. And one move that really caught my eye is he do basically like a Superman punch, but it's a Superman Samoan spike. He ain't nothing to fuck with. I'm telling y'all right now. Definitely go do your research. But again, shout out to Cody Rhodes. This was a phenomenal win. I can't wait to see who you defend that title against first. I already know it's going to be one hell of a match. Let me think. Who should be number one contender for Cody's belt? And I'm feeling like it's going to be LA Knight first because he just knocked off AJ Styles in a, in a really good match, actually. That was a, a real entertaining match, and I actually thought AJ Styles was going to win that match. Sidebar, WWE did a really good job with this event, and not only that, you can tell it's a new era because it didn't have the same format. Like, typically... It would be a more predictable format than it was. But, I mean, I didn't expect Sammy to win his match. I didn't expect AJ Styles to lose this match. Um, you know, who else? Let me look at this match card real quick. And I also didn't expect Drew McIntyre to win as well. <laughs> Which he kind of he did it. But we'll talk more about that in a second. But yeah, they did a really good job on this. 
But yeah, who I would want to see be the number one contender? I would say... I really want to see Bobby Lashley get back in contentions for that WWE Championship, man. You can't be called the Almighty and you don't win nothing. And getting into these whack-ass beefs with Karrion Cross. That's just my opinion. I love Bobby Lashley. That's one of my dogs. One of the greatest of all time wrestling-wise. Like, wrestling, wrestling-wise. Fuck the sports entertainment. I'm talking about wrestling-wise. Like, he's right up there with Kurt Angle. I've watched him beat Kurt Angle's ass in his last match. So, you can't play around with Bobby Lashley. He's well-established in the company. But I would definitely like to see him start getting back into championship contention. Shout out to him because him and the Street Profits actually won their match uh, when they faced against um, Karrion Cross's team. So, hopefully that's going to lead them in the right uh, trajectory into getting back into title contention. Uh, the Street Profits, you know, winning tag titles, and then obviously Bobby Lashley winning the WWE Championship. Um, at the same time, I, you know, I've been playing WWE 2K24, and they actually have Montez Sport winning the Royal Rumble in uh, the storyline mode, which I actually liked. And I feel like that's kind of foreshadowing to what they might have for him in the future. I would definitely like to see him have a successful singles run. Uh, I can't wait for that. And and I know he, part of him can't wait for that. I know he loved tagging with Doc and all that pause, but he he want to do his own thing. And it's only it's only normal when you an alpha yourself. You know that that's it is what it is. You know when you're an alpha, you you want certain shit for yourself. And hey, nobody can blame you. You can do that tag team shit any day of the week. But you know. It's really all about getting a, that singles championship at the end of the day. All right, up next, I want to talk about the Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre match. Now, as I did mention earlier, Drew McIntyre got the win in this match. And yo, this match, I would give it about four stars. I'm not going to lie. That last match that I just talked about, Cody Roman, uh, to put that on the record, I get at four and a half stars. It would have been a five star match. If there wasn't interference, I'm not going to lie. I felt like Cody and Roman could have tore the house down just then and it would have been just as good, you know, and it would have solidified Cody even that much more because it's like, OK, really, nobody came in to help me or anything. We just had a one on one fade and I did this by myself completely. So shout out to me. It's one of those type of gigs. But anyway, I digress. Going back into this match, this match, it was phenomenal. They traded finishers pretty much the whole way through. And in the end, Drew McIntyre would get the best of Seth Rollins and finish the match off with a Claymore. Now, at the end of the match is where the party really got started because for whatever reason, Drew McIntyre go over to CM Punk and he want to flex the belt in his face. And it's one thing to, you know, you know, how to belt all up in a nigga face. Like, yeah, puss ass nigga, you know what I'm saying? But it's another when you stand up on the announce table, okay, you squat. And now you're holding the title in this man's face talking crazy. So you got your man Gooch out because you know Drew McIntyre don't wear shorts. He wear them tight man thongs, right? So now he all up in CM Punk face talking spicy with the title, right? And it's like, okay, CM Punk like, all right, nigga, I'll let you have that. Whatever, woo do woo You need to just get up out of here. You won the title. Just get up out of here. Drew McIntyre is not enough for him. He want to take it a step further. He going to stand up in CM Punk face and hit him with one of these, right? CM Punk like, man... Okay, you got the game fucked up. I know my arm messed up, but it ain't that messed up, nigga. So Drew McIntyre thinks shit sweet. Hit him with one of them. He turned his back. CM Punk snatched that nigga off the hood of that motherfucker. Y'all got. And then uh, Drew McIntyre fall on the table, fall off. CM Punk takes off his arm cast. Blow! Knocks uh, Drew McIntyre the fuck out with it. And then sure enough, you hear uh, bisexual Undertaker music hit and Damian Priest come out and sure enough, cashes in his money in the bank uh, opportunity. 
hits that nigga with a south of heaven. And you know what he do when he goes south of heaven. He makes sure he scoop the ass too. Y'all know how he hits the choke and he scoop the ass. Pause. That's his move. That's the south of heaven. It's a dangerous move. I remember watching it with my boy. He did that shit to Cody Rhodes. He scooped Cody Rhodes' ass so crazy. We had to get on the show and talk about it. Because, bro, you can't know. At some point, it's sexual harassment. It ain't wrestling no more. You really you really go and south of heaven when you do that choke slam, bro. Like, hold up. So, anyway, one, two, three. Damian Priest is the new world champion on Raw. Shout out to Damian Priest, yo. I actually have absolutely no problem with this at all. Drew McIntyre, that is what you get. You should have just left. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. Why would you do that to CM Punk? When you look back at it, he had every opportunity to leave, bro. After you had kissed your wife, you should have took your ass to the back. But no, you went around the long side of the ring, walked all the way up to CM Punk, got on top of the desk, did all of that shit just to lose the title five minutes later. Like, come on, bro. That was the biggest head ass moment of your WWE, no, of your wrestling career. I think that was one of the most embarrassing moments in WWE history for sure. Uh, like I said, man, you have every opportunity to get out of there. And now, come on, let's be honest. Damian Priestman had his title for at least, I don't know, three to five months or more. He's not just giving it up like that. I can guarantee you. And especially if Judgment Day is still intact. Drew, you're not getting that title back anytime soon. I, I'm happy that you got to win it in front of a crowd this time and hopefully you enjoyed that moment as long as it lasted because nigga you not getting that belt back for a cool minute and I can promise you that for show sure, for show sure. but other than that it was a great match I enjoyed I enjoyed both matches you can say <laughs> but yo let's talk about the women's match I want to talk about Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch a layup for Rhea Ripley is what I like to call it. You know, added her credibility. You know, making her resume a little bit stronger with this one. That's exactly how I viewed this match. I knew that she was going to be Becky Lynch. But at the same time, Becky didn't just go out there and lay down. Trust and believe. She gave Rhea Ripley hell. And uh, they had a... A, a brilliant back and forth match and and really put on for the women's division and pretty much displayed why WWE's women's division all the way down to NXT you can't fuck with these women like that you really can't like they these women is really tough and I appreciate everything that um, Mercedes Monet be saying on about the women's division on AEW but she know like the world know that the WWE's women division ain't nothing to fuck with. And Rhea and Becky Lynch pretty much just show why. I promise you, if you're a female coming from any wrestling division right now to try to fight one of these women, you don't want it like that. You don't want it like that. I promise you. Rhea's going to give you hell for show. And Becky... Y'all see how Becky get down. And that's also why it makes sense for Becky to lose this match and why it's okay. Because she's a champion without the belt. That's how stamped Becky Lynch is. She's a champion without the belt. Just the name the man puts her on top in every situation. Right? Except for this one because obviously mommy's on top. But, you know, you don't want smoke with either one of them. And they had a phenomenal match at WrestleMania. I would probably rate their match a 3.5, almost a 4. If Becky would have been able to last a little bit longer, maybe kick out of one more riptide or something, it, it would have went up to a 4. But, yeah, she, she definitely did her best for sure. 
But let's talk about our WWE Women's Championship match featuring EO Sky. <laughs> Shannon Sharp was calling her AO <laughs> on uh on Nightcap. That should have me cracking up. Shout out to Nightcap. I love that show. I love watching uh uh that show. That's uh Shannon Sharp and Chad Ocho Cinco. They talk about sports and sometimes they'll talk about wrestling and whatnot. They had uh, a review on this WrestleMania uh, actually, so shout out to them. But EO Sky and Bailey. Now Bailey ended up winning this match. Shout out to her. It was definitely well deserved. Um, I was I was hyped for her. And on top of that, they had a really good match as well. You know, EO showed that she got that bag. She like, hold on, let me cook. You know, and I know I got to get this belt up, but I ain't giving it up like that. And once EO got cooking, like, it, it almost looked like she was about to retain. But I knew, like, no way in hell Bailey go through all that and they don't reward her with a championship. You know, she really did lead that faction damage control to greatness. Put them on. Really put them on. Introduce them to the main roster. And I feel like the story would have been told differently if Dakota Kai didn't get injured because, remember, she got injured and ended up not being able to wrestle in the group so they couldn't be tag team champions. And, you know, a lot of things had to get switched around, you know, just based off of that injury alone. So with that being said, you know, you just got to tip your cap to Bailey for being able to overcome all that bullshit. And, you know, she started this faction. So it's good that she's being able to be the one to cut off the new head of the snake. And I also want to say, you know, Bailey, she really outdid herself in this match too. She showed us some new shit that we don't typically see from her. And yeah, she has a mean streak, but this one, she was really trying to, you know, establish herself, like really show EO like, yo, I'm not fucking around and I'm taking this belt <laughs> for show. So shout out to Bailey. Congratulations, champ. How long do I think she'll hold it for? I don't know. And I also don't know who's going to be number one contender. But I don't want to see Bianca Belair be number one contender. I want her to be like number one contender later on down the line. Because you know Bailey got to get her little run. And having Bianca go up against Bailey right now is just too much momentum still on Bianca's side. So. It's going to be a layup for Bianca. And if Bianca lose that match, it's because Bailey probably cheated or made some type of alliance with somebody and finessed it. <laughs> but Bailey's not be beating Bianca clean. No way in hell. It just don't make sense. And especially how Bianca's been doing her for the past few years, it's like. No, Bailey, it's not going down like that. You've been getting KOD for three years straight. And now I'm supposed to believe all of a sudden because you beat EO, somebody that Bianca stepped on on multiple occasions straight up. Now all of a sudden you can beat Bianca? No, no, it's, it's not believable. And if she do beat Bianca clean, you know, they got to put a little cap in there. They gotta put a little cap in there. Some of that, some of that bullshit. You know, <laughs> that, that's what they like to call that sports entertainment. I really wish sometimes wrestling wasn't predetermined, so that way you could see who is really the best one. I want to see is John Cena really like that. I want to see if Roman Reigns is really like that because you know in Japan that's real wrestling. Like they don't play around. None of that shit is scripted. It's you survive or you don't. You get beat up or you don't. So when you win belts there, like it's it's a little bit more meaningful than it would be in other wrestling promotions. And hopefully when WWE moves to Netflix, they'll have some more of that. I would definitely like to see that. But going back into number one contenders, man. I really don't know right now. I feel like they should have like some type of gauntlet or something and then maybe let Jay Cargill be the first one to get a crack at Bailey. I'm not sure. Like it's it's gotta be somebody that Bailey can handle or to where it makes sense that her veteran skills is 
basically helping her win the match. It's got to be something like that. Maybe, um, I don't know, give Io Sky a rematch. Give her a rematch. Solidify and stamp it by beating her again. That's what I would like to see, for sure. And then as far as Rhea Ripley, Nia Jax has to take that championship off of Rhea Ripley. It's the only person on the roster that that will make sense. Becky Lynch, yeah, but Nia, that's even better. And Nia hasn't had that belt, well, a belt in a very long time. And you guys can't have her come back to the company the way she did and not reward her with a belt. She's stepping and shitting on everybody. What kind of sense does that make to have her come back and do that and then you not give her nothing? It's kind of what you guys have been doing with Omas. He's only in fucking in, in battle royals and shit when, and when there's like 16 niggas in the ring. That's the only time you guys utilize him. But he's like this fucking Nigerian monster that should be a champion. But he's not. He should be the one to take down Gunther or somebody like that. But, you know, the way shit is even set up right now, like... Omos ain't going to be winning shit anytime soon, but it's the same thing I'm talking about with Nia Jax. I want to see Nia Jax win. And Nia Jax need to win the Women's World Championship. That's what I would like to see. But let's talk about this brotherly fade between Jay and Jimmy Uso. Now, what did I tell y'all? Super kicks and frog splashes the entire fucking match. At this part, I'm not going to lie, I was falling asleep. I'm not going to lie. And I didn't think that Jay was actually going to get the win. Now, again, this is also why this WrestleMania was so good because they didn't have their typical format, you know, their predictable format, where Jimmy is supposed to win this match to piss off Jay to keep the story going. You know, Roman's supposed to win this match to piss off Cody and this lead to SummerSlam. You know, Drew McIntyre supposed to lose this match and then beats the hell out of Seth Rollins and then Damian Priest cashes in on an injured Seth Rollins. Like, you know, this is how the typical format would be. But this year, no, like they switched it up completely and you've seen people winning that you wouldn't expect to win. Like, I didn't expect Sammy to beat Gunther. I'm not gonna lie. All that training and bullshit and all that wooty woo, I didn't expect Sammy to be Gunther. Yeah, I just didn't see it. Like I didn't think that they was gonna actually lean into letting him win. So that that's what I'm trying to say. Like the old format, like these people aren't getting these wins. But Jay and Jimmy, man, they had a decent match. I guess I guess you could say it was a, a solid two and a half, three. You know. Um, Again, the moveset is what made this match so damn boring. I watched these men super kick each other about six, seven times. Who on God's green earth is trying to sit there and watch that an entire wrestling match, bro? Like, this is not 2007. You know, and you guys is making the super kick look like it ain't shit. <laughs> like, Shawn Michaels used to knock niggas out with that shit. One, two, three, and the match was over. Now, you niggas are super kicking each other seven times a match, and that shit is diluted. <laughs> like, come on. But this brotherly rivalry is not over. Trust and believe, there is still more to come. And uh, I also want to point out that Jay is getting better in the ring, but he needs to come up with his own finisher, and he needs to add some more slams or... Just some more technical moves to to his bag because he's still not main event ready. As much as you you can put somebody in the main event, but that don't mean that they main event. I promise you, if this nigga go to AEW or any other promotion with this move set, he's getting washed. <laughs> you think you think Will Ospreay can't handle this nigga, huh? Um, you think Keith Lee can't handle this nigga? Uh, shit. Uh, Matt Cordona. You name it. Niggas is handling Jey Uso. No problem. Hell, Sting, who just retired, who I just met at ToyCon uh, the same day as WrestleMania. I wish I could have got an interview with him, but I couldn't. They was hella strict. But Sting, he not going for that. 
You know what I'm saying? You're not about to beat Sting with a frog splash and some super kicks. It's not going down. So that's my whole point. I just want to see. I'm not trying to hate on Jay or nothing. I, I actually rock with Jay, but it's no yeet over here. Jimmy is hilarious. That's my dog. Uh, so I'm rolling with Jimmy on this one, but at the same time, I'm not hating on Jay. I just want him to add on to his moveset so that way it's more believable when he wins matches or when he wins titles. You know, that's all I want. But shout out to them, and I uh, can't wait to see where this rivalry goes. Up next, I want to talk about Logan Paul's match with Randy Orton and Kevin Owens, right, for the United States Championship. This match went perfectly. Shout out to Logan Paul. Shout out to Prime. Hey, if y'all see this, hook your boy up with some Prime and let me get that sponsor. You know what I'm saying? I can put the little Prime shit right here. Blow! And then we on and popping. So tap in with your boy. But yeah, Logan Paul had another magnificent match. I really enjoyed this match actually. And this match was perfect because this is going to give Logan Paul that credibility that he needs. He's in a triple threat match with Randy Orton and Kevin Owens, multi-time world champions, and he was able to survive, you know, and not only that, but retain his United States Championship. And then that also kind of moves him up in a rank to where he's a legible number one contender for a WWE Championship opportunity or a world championship opportunity, right? So... Um, this is really good for Logan Paul's credibility, and then on top of that, it's going to help him in the long run, because then he can, this is something like Chris Jericho used to say, I beat The Rock and Stone Cold in the same night for the uh, Undisputed Championship. Well, <laughs> now Logan Paul can say, I beat Kevin Owens and Randy Orton in the same night, you know, for the United States Championship. You know, it's that type of credibility, um, so... I'm really hyped on that. They had some viral moments in there. They had Speed show up. Um, shout out Speed. He's fucking hilarious. Kind of gross and, and annoying, but this nigga's hilarious. I've watched him fart on baddies before and still get their number. Um, him and Kai Sanat, funniest niggas on Twitch for sure. Shout out Kai Sanat too. That's my dog. But yeah, they had Speed there. He was barking in Randy Orton's face. Randy Orton Spartan kicked this nigga in his fucking chest and then RKO'd him on the table. That shit was fucking hilarious, yo. Um, shout out to Speed. Shout out to WWE for bringing those worlds together and, you know, knowing what the people like. You know, so they obviously know that Speed is, is, is a popular streamer and is going to bring more eyes and shit. They're going to be like, yo, why is Speed there? You know, uh, fun fact, WWE got 1.3 billion views on this past WrestleMania. Like, that's the most views in anything that's on today. <laughs> or anything that's been on in the past 20 years. So, shout out to WWE for constantly breaking records and showing why this is the biggest sporting event in the world. Like, it's bigger than the Super Bowl. It's bigger than the NBA Finals. It's bigger than the World Cup. People hate to admit it, but numbers don't lie. You know what I'm saying? This is just more entertaining than fucking boxing. Nobody give a shit about what, what boxing got going on. Like, if it's not the big names, and even the big names kind of don't know how to sell their matches and shit. So, that's why there's not really as much interest as it is in WWE. And on top of that, nobody's going through tables or getting hit with chairs in boxing. They just not. So... It, obviously, it's not as entertaining. Like, let's just be real. Niggas not getting suplexed in boxing. So, you know, like, this shit is where it's at. WWE got the game sewed up. They really do. But uh, I know we talked about the main event of all, but let me also speak to that tag team match that Cody and Seth Rollins was in versus Roman and The Rock. The Rock ended up winning this match for the Bloodline and. This was actually an impressive win for The Rock. Yeah. For somebody to come off the couch and have a short time of training and then be able to do this, this type of caliber match, you got to tip your cap to The Rock, man. Like That's, that's some final ball shit right there. Shout out to him. And, uh, you know, he did it for Mama Rhodes. <laughs> this match was full of action, um, had great pacing, 
and unpredictability. Like, again, like I didn't, the typical format, because Seth Rollins and Cody have momentum going into this match, they should have won this match. That's the typical format. But because this is a new era, a new time, WWE completely switched it up and The Rock and Roman were able to win this match, which is why Cody's match with Roman Reigns ended up being a Bloodlines Rules match. Um, but I wanted to just, you know, give a special shout out to The Rock because his run in WWE, like this this past run, it, it was great. It was great. I'm not even going to cap. For somebody to get off the couch and have that type of run and have that type of heat and be able to do all of what he's done in such a short period of time is just like, yo, this is, that was dope to see. That was really dope to see. Um, yo, <laughs> he's so fucking funny. Like, he came out on Monday Night Raw and he said, this is the largest gate for a Monday Night Raw ever in history. So you know what that means? This is the largest gathering of hillbilly trash. <laughs> he just gets straight to disrespecting niggas. He's fucking hilarious. So shout out to The Rock. Yo, I, I really enjoyed his time in uh, WWE this past go around. Yo. Um, and that was a great match again. In other news, I'm also happy to announce that WWE has finally split those fucking tag belts back up again. The SmackDown belts are going back to SmackDown and Raw is going back to Raw. So, pause. So, I'm, I'm real hyped on that. Uh, I've been waiting for them to do that for a cool-ass minute. I don't necessarily agree with who's tag champs. But, at the same time, I'm just hyped that they split them damn belts back up again. Um, R-Truth and The Miz are the Raw tag team champions. And Austin Theory... And Grayson Waller are the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. I don't agree with R-Truth and The Miz. But at the same time, I don't mind. I really would have liked the Creed Brothers to win those or something. Um, just, you know, a legible tag team. You know, I want a more serious era to come about in this WWE. Like... I don't want these little storylines where these niggas is playing around and doing all this weird shit on the side. Like, I want everybody to be serious about winning championships. Like, that's just what I'm interested in seeing me personally. And I feel like if you're in wrestling to just be wrestling, that's crazy. Like, you know, how do you not want a championship? Like, the, I, I thought that was the whole point of this shit is to get one of these you know what i'm saying so how how could you not want one of them like I, I i couldn't imagine it so that but again that's just my opinion now i've spoken about this match a lot throughout the show already um gunther versus Sami Zayn for the intercontinental championship match i i did not expect gunther to lose this match you know um, but when i when I really looked back on it and, and started thinking about how they had Sami Zayn win in his uh, most recent matches where he would pretty much get the tar beat out of him, pause, and then he would resiliently come back on some Shawn Michaels shit and end up winning the match. And that's pretty much what he did with Gunther right now. Gunther was beating the shit out of him, pause, and eventually Sami Zayn just snapped into a different mindset got on his, you know, Hulk Hogan shit where he's all like, you! <laughs> and then you, he got the comeback win against Gunther. And sure enough, one, two, three, Sami Zayn is the new Intercontinental Champion. I was impressed, you know, and I also enjoyed the match. Uh, you know, it's all, it's a real full circle moment for Sami Zayn because the entire reason why he joined the Bloodline because if I'm not mistaken, Drew McIntyre had taken the Intercontinental Championship away from Sami Zayn or cost him the championship or something like that. So uh, Sami Zayn was on the verge of trying to get his Intercontinental Championship back. But as he was trying to do that, he was pissing off people. So he tried to go with the bloodline to try to, you know, get some backup. <laughs> and then he ended up having to really be in the bloodline and he eventually got away from trying to retain the Intercontinental Championship and he never got his opportunity again. 
So this is, again, like a full circle moment for Sami Zayn because it's like, man, after all these years, you finally get your fucking title back. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I was shocked. I didn't think he was actually going to do it because Gunther was on just one hell of a reign. And I guess, like, you know, it makes sense because Gunther got a win last year over uh, Drew McIntyre and Sheamus in a triple threat match at WrestleMania, which was probably the most hardest hitting Paul's match of all time. So uh, at WrestleMania, the niggas was going crazy in the ring. Shout out to them. After that, for Gunther to go on the run that he went on beating everyone who he's beat, I just expected them to reward him again with uh, another win over a big name at WrestleMania for all the work he's put in. But again, that's the old format. And I'm really hyped on this era because that means wrestling is going to be unpredictable again. Shout out Triple H, he's doing a really good job in the company, setting up these match cards, giving people opportunities, letting people have more control of their character and, you know, uh, more control of their storyline. So I'm really excited to see the direction that WWE is about to be going in. Now, with that being said, give me one second while I take this dab. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all, I forgot the name of this one. It tastes good though. Pause. There's been a lot of pauses today. I'm sick. <laughs> match I'll quickly mention is Rey Mysterio teaming up with Andrade versus Dominic Mysterio and Santos Escobar at WrestleMania. Um, this was a phenomenal match in itself. Shout out to Rey for being 2-0 against Dom. This was a really good match between father and son again, but I fear because Rey Mysterio posted on Instagram that he's now 2-0 against Dom, that's going to make WWE make him two and one, <laughs> you know, uh, but you know, there might be a chance he can go three and oh, but trust and believe he's going to get that one eventually. I just don't want to see him get that one. I hope that Rey Mysterio can just retire with a winning record against his son and that'd be the end of it. <laughs> Cause I don't feel like Dom deserve a win over his dad. Let's be real. Nobody want to see that shit. But because WWE want to create more hype and make people more mad at Dom and, you know, get pissed off, they're going to give him that win eventually. And I just, I just don't want to see that. But yeah, shout out them. They had a great match. Dragon Lee was unfortunately taken out uh, prior to this match, which is why Andrade was in this match instead of him. But it was originally supposed to be Dragon Lee. Now, who took him out? There's been a lot of speculation that is Carlito but we don't know for sure and they say that because carlito was looking a little crazy when ray uh told him that andrade gonna be helping him instead of <laughs> carlito you know i'm like man this, if that's so that's a lame ass angle bro i'm tired of people turning on ray mysterio what the fuck is up with that he don't deserve that shit this is a good man why y'all keep writing storylines like that batista eddie his son it ain't never gonna be enough for you niggas, bro. Santos, the list goes on and fucking on. Leave Ray the fuck alone. What's wrong with y'all? That's the only thing I'm gonna say. Leave Ray the fuck alone. He cool as fuck. Just let him be the leader of the LWO. Let him come out there, have his lucha matches. Maybe get a rematch for the United States Championship. Like, come on. Like, be cool with Ray. That's my dog. But the last and final match I want to talk about is Jay Cargill teaming up with Naomi and Bianca Belair in her first match at WrestleMania versus the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Sane and Dakota Kai. Now, also known as Damage Control. I was really not only impressed, but proud and hyped to be watching this match and not only that but of 
all the women that participated in this match. Damage control, they are really good sports and understood the assignment. Okay, Dakota Kai, she understood the assignment. Okay, get in the ring and let Jay dust that ass. <laughs> okay, and that's exactly what Jay did. Got in the ring and dusted that bitch ass off, right? And then you got Bianca coming in and doing her thing. Uh, Naomi holding it down. So, you know, this was a really great display of black women, of black talent, of black wrestling, of black excellence. You know what I mean? Uh, shout out to WWE, you know what I'm saying? They, they understood the assignment with this one for sure. This was also a great display and great utilization of uh, Jade Cargill and a great way to introduce her to the company. And then having them team up versus having them as opponents is, is really powerful. And it's a real positive thing. It's deeper than, you know, than what it looks like, Pauls. So shout out to WWE for understanding the assignment with this match. This match was super impressive and, and it also got me excited to see what else is in store, you know. And I really hope that Hunter adds more championships, like, you know, women's trios championships or something like that. Um, Becky was complaining about there being more belts, but, and, and she wants there to be more side storylines. Like, what? I'm like, no, that sounds crazy. Nobody want to see that shit. It, you, you're in wrestling to be a champion. Okay, at the end of the day, 90% of the people that are in wrestling are in it to be a champion or wanted to be a champion at some fucking point. Okay, that's just, it is what it is. So with that being said, I definitely want to see more belts in the company, like a women's trios championship or a men's trios championship, a women's intercontinental championship, women's United States championship. Like there needs to be more belts and more belts create more storylines and then also give people more shit to do and more motivation to show up to work and do something because think about it you only got the women's world championship and the wwe women's championship and the line is so fucking long and obviously the people that are champions right now ain't giving that shit up anytime soon so what the fuck are y'all gonna be doing in the meantime y'all gonna be needing something to do in the meantime go for another championship, the United States, Intercontinental, there's something else there for you versus there being only two or three belts to go for. And most of y'all don't want to go back to NXT. And, you know, some of y'all don't want to do the tag team shit. So, come on, what else are you going to be doing? You know, nobody wants to see you do anything else. We want to see you compete for championships because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. All right, y'all, that's going to wrap up our show. Um, this WrestleMania was phenomenal. I'll put the ratings in the description. I know I didn't rate all the matches, but I'll have the ratings in the description. You guys go ahead and check that out. And then let me know what you guys rated uh, these matches, how you guys felt about them. Let me know what you guys thought about this year's WrestleMania. Let me know what changes you guys want to see made in the company, what belts they should add, etc. I want to hear all that. Shout out to everybody new that's tuning into this show. Shout out to everybody that's been rocking with me from the jump. I really appreciate you guys. You guys keep the show going on. And on top of that, you guys give me motivation to come here and do this every day. I love y'all. I love talking about wrestling with y'all. Can't do this without y'all. Please make sure you guys continue to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this shit with the world. And then also make sure you guys go check out my shop. I put that in the description too, the Players Club franchise. I got all the fly shit, all the fly gear on there for the players. And I uh, got some shit on there for females as well. So make sure you guys go tap in with that. Again, I appreciate you guys for watching. Can't do this without y'all. Make sure you guys continue to subscribe, man. I love you. Peace.